getting my bearings for the next week. Hello and welcome to the Stock Planner channel. This week is expected to be relatively quiet in terms of economic data, but there's a few events you need to watch. The FOMAC meeting minutes and several speeches from Federal Reserve officers will occur this week. Inflation still seems to be of concern. The war in Ukraine, the train wreck in Ohio, all are issues that are playing on investors' minds. We're still in earnings seasons, and retail sales data will be released on Wednesday. That's something to keep an eye out. It's a four-day trading week this week, based on the holiday. Time to get your plans together and go through a couple charts, make some assumptions, make some predictions, make your plan. The Stock Planner Channel is an education channel. We're swing traders, sharing our ideas, trying to help each other. Each person must do their own due diligence. Trading is risky, but once you learn it, you can win for life. Let's get started taking a snapshot or a look at the market using FinViz. Looks like on Friday, the Dow was up. NASDAQ and the S&P was slightly down. Not much. Microsoft, Apple, Google, NVIDIA, Amazon, all down. I'm thinking about going long on Amazon for next week and put a little plan together. It sat on my Discord chat. Oh, the one-day return utilities, consumer defensive, and healthcare did well. Consumer defensive for the week. And it looks like the month didn't turn out too bad. Energy's on the bottom. I think that's going to be ch changing soon. Looking at the futures, on the 10th of February, I filled out a guest list of what direction I think the market w was going to go for these various different symbols. And today, the 20th of February, 10 days later, but the results were about 69%. That's good because really nobody can predict. I call this spreadsheet a prediction spreadsheet, but nobody can predict the market. You don't know. No, nobody knows which way that it's going to go. But trading is is trying to predict what the direction of the market. So you have to be able to do it consistently better than 50%. Anyway, SPY, the Qs, and the RUT, I said was going to go short. And apparently I was wrong. Let's take a look. Spy was looking like it was going up. And then it was looking like it was going down. But really, all it is, it's just chopping. NASDAQ looked like it was going up. Then it looked like it was going down. But really, all it is, is chopping. Same with the rut. Going down, but really, it's just chopping around. That's difficult to make a prediction. So I'm going to annotate the list as neutral. Stay within the 3% or 4% range. Yeah, 6% not going to move more than 6%. And I'm going to do these for all the other stocks. I'm going to go through these real quick and update my spreadsheet. You see, uh, if I would have said neutral on the 10th, I would have had a winners here. And tomorrow, which is Tuesday, today is Monday, I'll update this to be on the, the 21st and then stunt. But right now, if I updated it for tomorrow, these will have, I'll have errors here. But there's no data for tomorrow yet. Neutral, neutral, neutral. Gold, we have, I thought, some support there. Now we see some consolidation the last three days there. Well, maybe the support is now moved down. Anyway, I think that gold is going to trade in, in here be, over the next month. And I think eventually it'll fill this gap. So I was calling it right short 10 days ago. But now I'm changing it to a long. Silver, probably the same thing long fill the gap as well copper don't going to trade into here but but i'm not sure about copper so i'm going to call that neutral looks like consolidating i don't know which direction do you do? leave a comment below if you know which direction that it's going to go i like trading copper and you see oil or energy and there's some some looks like there's some kind of support in this area here now will it bounce back and go up well we are in in winter i'm from virginia it's not been that severe I do think energy is going to come into play. Anybody live in Texas? They say it's cold down there. And central USA had a couple cold snaps. Here in Virginia, it's been broiled. So I think energy is going up long. And 10 days ago, I predicted it to be short, and I was correct. Looking at Apple, looks like some consolidation here. The MACD is pointing down. And the RSI seems to be going and heading to the south as well. So I don't know when it will move, but it seems like it's favoring a short. 
and 10 days ago I said it was going to be short and it got chopped. AMD looked like a short as well. Amazon, is that going to be some support? I think it is. I think it's going to go maybe add somewhere at the blue line there. I did a analysis of this and it's out on my YouTube channel. Long. One of my colleagues has said he'd wait a couple days. Cautious. Cautiously optimistic. Baba, I just went long on Thursday or Friday. CRISPR, seemed like there's some support action right in this area here. In earnings, this is the cancer cure company. This is a wait and see, and I'll say neutral. I don't know about this, and I haven't been playing it. Disney, which it's been seeing a lot of news articles, and when you see a lot of news articles, that means maybe you should take a look at it. We have a new CEO, and he's taking action. Looks like Disney is pointing down short. What direction is Ford going? Up, down, or neutral? Well, I don't have no idea. And this is, the MACD is close to the zero line. I'll say neutral. Google, consolidation. Is there support there? Looks like we might have a bounce soon. I'm just, a, this is a guess again. What do you think? MAC is still pointing down. Looks like we have a crossover here, though. We're going to get a little green dot here soon. And the RSI is pointing down. Zigzag, at this point in time, knew what it was doing, but it, ha it hasn't known what it's doing now. So it's just, zigzag, if you remember, is a perfect indicator. It always knows the tops and bottoms. But if to do that, it looks to the future. We don't have that ability to look to the future. Z zigzag can wait to put these lines in. These are major lines, and this is a minor line. They can put the, these lines in here when it has enough data that it's actually right. But right now, ZigZag doesn't know what it's doing. That's when we like the trade. When it doesn't know what it's doing, we like to know. We like to do what. And we use other, other indicators to tell us what what's happening. And these other indicators are pointing down. But we also hit, have hit a, a level of support, possibly. And that's a weak support. But it looks like there's some consult over here and you got a support line right here so is it going down to here or up to here up or down up or down i think it's we're gonna have to change change the atmosphere so i'm gonna say up and the last 10 days i said it was gonna go short i was absolutely right is there support there or will this down trend continue i think it's going to continue in this neutral chop let's just say neutral Stay within a six percent range now you can change that i can on my spreadsheet i can change that all this excitement when it jumps like that on earnings nothing has really changed with the company it was a pretty safe bet that it would go down now i'm going to say short as well microsoft short netflix i think it's gone down neo this is my three bagger i'm hoping and praying and wishing it go up we have a Crossover from the MACD, and it looks like we had an oversold situation with the RSI recently. And I'm praying and hoping and wishing that it'll go up. Neil, long. Maybe there's saner minds out there. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. Long, Neo. NVIDIA, earnings. I wouldn't do anything on this at the moment. No call. Palatar, short. And Tesla, short. MACD is pointing down. And recently the RSI was overbought. This is a highly volatile stock. Lots of people like to trade it. Looking at a couple ETFs, FXI. Looked like the last two weeks has been down a short. And we'll call it a short again. Brazil, it's one of the first ETFs I ever traded. I don't know why I keep wanting to trade it. It's not been that happy for me. Chopping around. Let's put a support down here. It's in the middle. Let's call this neutral. Merging index fund, EEM. Let's call that a short as well. Nice swings. I have a Discord chat and I have a free area where you have to get some free chat. It's not a great place to hang out because it's not a lot of people are using it, but it's where I exchange some of the trade ideas. And I have a, a free watch list. And this is a, a lot of stocks. And it gives you direction. It's based on, direction is based on a slope. And if the direction is going up that way, that's a, going to be a long. 
if it's going up straight up, a strong, strong trend. And if it's not going anywhere, it's no trend. And we get down the list, just alphabetical. And we're going to pick two stocks, one up and one down. And we're going to do AIG for the up and BMY, Bristol Myers. I like Bristol Myers for short. And DE John Deere for a long. Two longs and a short. AIG, we got the zigzag going up. That's the nice long run, if you could catch that. And one going down. Now the zigzag doesn't know what it's doing. The minor zigzag, baby zigzag, it, it thought it was going up. Now even that doesn't know what it's doing. It's indecisive. This is earnings here. It seemed like it wanted to go up after earnings and then down. I think you're going to see a lot of indecisiveness here. And you, this is sort of a, a consolidation period. The trend is up. Is the trend your friend? Well, the list said long based on slope, and it was an automated list. Let's do a long there and see how it turns out. John Deere, the list said long based on the slope. It must be right. Now, this is earnings. This is happiness. And when you see that, the trend is definitely up. But what happens when you have a long candle like that after earnings? See it there? Down. So I'm changing my long, even though the list said long, I'm changing it to a short. Again, it's based on slope. The slope is definitely up and that pointing skyward, but it's based on this long candle after, and I'm going to change my John Deere to a short this week. Fading. Fading the happiness. Fading the retail traders. Just like over here. Fading the retail. Looks like it wanted to go up. But the prevailing trend is definitely down. The list said down. We're going to say down. So, seems like there's some kind of level of support right there. So, maybe it'll bounce. I'm changing my mind. I'm going against the list neutral. The list said it was in a downtrend. I'm seeing it might be a reversal here based on the, on the, the support level. That listing shows you the overall trend. And the overall trend is down. But... It, it doesn't sh tell you when when it's about the reverse. And that's what a swing trader, that's what I am, a swing trader. I'm looking for these reversals. Zigzag doesn't know what it's doing. Baby Zig knew what it was doing, but now he don't even know what it's doing. So it's indecisive here. That's when I like to take some action. And I think I'll just call this a neutral play. Out on the free chat as well, there's another area for the zigzag. And what it's saying here is that the RSI... And the zig, when the zig doesn't know what it's doing, and waited two bars, and the RSI agrees with it, it gives us a signal. Likewise, if the MACD and the zig, the zig doesn't know what it's doing, it waits two bars, the MACD gives a signal, and the stochastic RSI gives a signal. Choosing two here, we have a, a gold. Let's not do gold. Let's do EWM, that's $25 stock, $22 stock, and lithium. And CNX. Lithium. The algo said short. And that's a long red candle. Will it stop here? It looks like there's some level of support at the point there. The MAC is on the zero line. That's indecisive. And the R size is generally pointing down. The algo said short based on a zigzag not knowing what it's doing and the RSI coming back around over its overbought situation and that's it overbought after earnings so it's pointing down but it went down so I think I'm gonna call this neutral because I think as far it appears it's went down and by the way the earnings report was good You have to ask yourself, when you're following these algos, these are just ideas to investigate further. You might have different indicators that are saying something different. I'm just saying, I, th I see a support l line right here. You see it there? There it is. It's based on this. From there. And some over here. Almost there. I don't know. Neutral. This is the ETF, Malaysia. 
looks like that's definitely short. The RSI is in its oversold situation and about to come back around. The MACD is in its lower quadrant, low to zero. And recently we just had a crossover. And the algo says long, and I agree with it. I think this is going up soon. Let's put a support line somewhere in there. Well, you could, you could definitely draw it down here. In this case, the zigzag does know what it's doing. So you might want to wait a day or two, but I think this is going up soon. And then I have a premium level where when all three things align, Memo CD, the Tocastics, and the RSI, it gives an a signal and we recently had American Airlines and Delta a buy we're just going to choose one we'll choose Delta and Lulu for short Delta Airlines using the three indicator strategy on the daily time frame each bar is a day's worth of data what we try to do is we try to capture these swings like this and we like to have the MACD below the zero line a crossover of the stochastics and an RSI single when there's singles in the oversold condition and when all three of those occur within three or four bars of each other that is a stronger single and gives a strong single up we look for those kind of conditions the opposite is true for a short you want to see that the MACD above the zero line an oversold condition overbought condition for the stochastics and an overbought condition for the RSI when it comes back around, when all three of those occur at the same time, that gives a short single. And that will last at three or four days. That same thing occurred here and here, but we have the MACD not above the zero line. It's, it's close to it. You did have a crossover here. When they all three occur, that would have gave us a single down there, or it may not have. But what we have now here is we have the MACD below the zero line. We have a cross, recent crossover of the stochastics. And we had an oversold, an oversold situation with the the RSI, and those indicators, when they all occur at the same time, give a long signal, which we have now. Is it going up? The three indicator strategy says it, it is. Now there's a lot of news on the airlines and cancellations and all kinds of other such situations, but people are traveling. Um, my wife's Chinese. And she's looking on the, online right now to, to travel uh, and visit friends in the United States and travel back to China. And the rates have come down a little bit based on three years ago. I told her to, not to travel until they stop, until China stops sending balloons over, but she wants to visit her mother. The algo says up uh, with Delta. Well, we have Lululemon, clothing, sports. And you have a lot of consolidation here, a lot of chop. The MACD is above the zero line. Dochastic is above and it's over bought condition and it's come back around. And so is the RSI. Those are conditions when they occur, we'll say it's time to short it. And this is probably going to come down a little bit. This is an expensive stop. So a little bit, if you have the right strategy, possibly using options, a little move on Lululemon pays a lot of dividend, but if you got the direction wrong, a little move will kill you. Anyway, I'm going, I'm going to call this short for Lululemon based on the three indicator strategy, which is a premium option. I think it's $7 a month to get those signals. There's also the mean reversion. I like to play this a lot because it's very reliable and a gap. When, when you have those situations where it gaps up quickly like meta and then goes back down. I already played. So I've taken my simple spreadsheet. I've changed the date to Friday. And I'm also going to change this until Tuesday because that's when it starts. But based on Friday's information and based on what I think is correct, I have a 70% chance of, of winning. And I've also changed the neutral to be of a 3% range either what side little movement this is my general plan i expect to win 70 percent of the time but we know that this will probably come down if you can win 70 percent of your trades you can make some money 
I think to be successful and consistent, you need to know your numbers anyway, know your win rate. Nobody can predict the market, but you need to try. That's called trading. And if you can set up your risk reward so that you only have to win 50% of the time and you have your guess rate or prediction rate of 70% or 60% or 55%, you have a winning winning system. It's just a, n a numbers game after that. And then you can play those numbers to be consistent and have consistent wins week after week. That's all I've got for you. Remember to do your own due diligence. Check out my lists on, on Discord, but don't follow them blindly. You have to use the lists to start you thinking, especially when you have a trend. That trend can reverse. That's what, what swing traders do. They try to re predict when the trend is going to reverse. What is your win rate? Do you know your win rate? If you do, please leave a comment below. I would say most of you don't know your percentage and your win rate. Happy trading. We'll catch you on the flip.